Welcome back to MacBreak Studio, and we're continuing our discussion of virtual reality. 360 VR, whatever you want to call it. Augmented yeah. reality? Augmented What's the well, difference? Well, augmented reality is where you're looking in the real world and there's additional elements. In fact, if you use this ViewMaster along with this little disc, when mm. you first point it at this disc, um, you see the disc, but then you see little animals appear on it. Or buildings. Or buildings or something. That's augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Virtual reality is where you're seeing complete, something completely separate. Um, so if you didn't watch the last episode, you might want to look that up. We'll have a link below where we talk more about acquisition and viewing options. Um, and we showed especially this ViewMaster little $18 uh, viewer that you can use with your phone. And an iPhone 5 or 6 will work in there as well as, as other phones. But what I want to talk about today is, here's the analogy. A lot of people have been asking, like, why should I shoot 4K when I'm um, delivering 1080? You know, I'm right. delivering HD. What do I need 4K for? And, and there's a lot of compelling arguments that we talk about, and um, yeah. we've done a whole uh, tutorial on it, right? Yeah. Um, there's there's value of being able to have all that extra material because of various things you can do in post. Right. So th this extends that idea. So why shoot 360 if you're going to deliver a flat? image that you're not going to drag around in or people aren't going to watch on the head head mounted display why would you shoot 360 yeah, so i wanted to very give very good question actually well yeah it's 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 a tool it's a tool and i wanted to give two examples of ways that you can shoot in 360 but then deliver something that is um, is flat basically a, an hd result or just a flat result and the first one I'm going to show two different examples and this for was shot the with one. your theta camera yes yeah, so this this particular I mean, i'll play it this is a, um, a video that was shot with the Rico Theta S that we have on the table here, uh, just by, I have it on a monopod uh, pinched to the sliding uh, sunroof of the car um, to hold it steady and driving, driving around the streets of Mill Valley here uh, to create this. It's been converted to an equa rectangular format using the free Rico app. So which you covered can, in the last session. Which we covered in the last one. And so, of course, you could just share this, um, but it looks a little bizarre. It looks kind of cool, but it's a little bit bizarre. But one thing you can do with this is, um, we talked about Tim Dashwood's tools. This is a 360 VR Express version, yeah, the $100 version right. versus the high-end version. It includes something uh, called Little Planet Express. And if I drag that onto this, it's going to give us a, it's basically going to turn this back into a sphere. So yeah. we can see everything in this in this kind of highly it's stitching together the front and back it, of yeah, the it's camera, just wrapping it back up again, and it's got some dipshit options here. Instead of transparent background, you can put an average sky in there, and you can manipulate it using some of the other plugins in terms of the orientation. There's a reorientation of the sphere, and that's one way you can do this. But Tim's tools are really meant more for VR production, where you you want to um, reorient, you want to add graphics, you want to composite into it. So another tool that just came out recently is from SugarFX called uh, Revolve 360, right here. And I'm just going to turn it on. I have it applied already. And Revolve 360 takes things a little bit further in terms of giving you some presets to work with. So I'll just, I'll just play a little bit of this. But if I open up this plugin, it lets me choose from a, a pop-up menu of a whole bunch of different types of options for what things look like in here. So right now, I think I'm on Tiny Little Planet. I'll, set, I'll choose Super Tiny Planet. Let me get this really little tiny thing there. <laughs> um, or you can go to uh, Mouse Point of View, and it'll do something a little bit more like, kind of like what we saw originally, but not quite as stretched. Right. Um, you can see the hood They're of the car They're just basically right there. visual presets that are remapping that image exactly. over, the, spe over exactly. the sphere. And you can, take, you can take your own settings. I'm going to go back to... Uh, Tiny Little Planet, because I like that one. And it includes settings that you can show where you can adjust the axes and the fisheye and the zoom to your liking. So, And there's also some special framing options as well. So you have full control over the look of it. Uh, and depending on what you're shooting, you know, it's, it's it can be great on a clear sky or a sunny day. Uh, here, I'd like it if the camera actually higher from the car, because the car kind of dominates, but I was afraid of the camera getting sure. wh whacked by something. Yeah. But this is kind of a way of delivering a neat effect. So if you took this and you had multiple versions of it and you speed ramp them and you could edit mm -hmm. some fun stuff together. So just a tool in your in your arsenal for making video. So that's one option. But here's another thing I like. Um, I'm going to turn that guy off and I'm going to go back to Tim's tools because one of Tim's tools in the 360 VR Express is this uh, thing called 
HMD preview. And we head looked mounted last display. Week, yeah, head mounted display preview. Now, last time we looked at an app that is sort of more useful because you can run the app and drag around in it, and this just gives you this one view. You have to open it up and use these sliders in order to, for instance, pan around. Okay, and you're like, well, why should I bother doing that when I can run a little app and I can actually drag on a, on a separate screen? But these are key frameable. Ah, okay. right. So if you think of it this way, maybe you want to deliver a video where you don't want to require the viewer to drag around, mm -hmm. but you want to control it. So you can decide when the view changes. It's almost like being able, it's, it's exactly like being able to pan or tilt the camera in post. Right. Because you captured everything around you. So while the car is moving, you could say, well, I want to start out going forward, but like right around here, let's see, when it comes out, I'm going to come up here, and we're kind of coming up to a sunny spot about here. I want to start looking to the right. So I'm going to put a keyframe down here for the panning, and then I'll go forward a little bit, and then I'll start a pan over to look through the back of the car, okay? And if I play that back now, as the car heads up the road, I want to go too far behind. Right about there it starts. So now we're, driving, we're looking forward, and now we're being taken to start to look around in a different perspective. Interesting. So you've got full control over using keyframes to manipulate the viewer perspective, rather than requiring the viewer to move around. I can and it really tends what your storytelling goal is, right? So I, I love this idea. The thing is, in keyframing key in Final Cut's a little bit limited. It's a little bit clunky. You, you keyframe any of those parameters, and they're not going to ease at all. No. They'll be chunk, chunk, chunk. Right. Right? So the cool thing is, is this um, Dashwood plugin is available in Motion. So here I'm in Motion, and you'll notice I'll hit Command-8 for the keyframe uh, editor. You're doing better interpolation on the keyframes. Yeah, key I've changed these keyframes to be eased. So mm -hmm. I did the same thing by setting keyframes for this plugin. You can see here in the inspector, we've got each of the axes, and I've set keyframes. But this case, I, I selected them all, and I used the pop-up menu here to change the interpolation to Bezier. And then I adjusted these Bezier curves to uh, make a nice curve. Ramping in and out. Ramping in and out. So in this case, I'll, I'll close that, and I play a little bit of this shot. So we're starting looking at the at the sky, and then we tilt down. You can feel it slow table. down at the table. Slow down, and now it, it eases as it turns around. Okay. So here's an example where we're controlling the view, uh, and this this happens to be a still, but we, as we've seen, it can be video, sure. still or video, um, or combinations of them. So um, just two options for thinking about storytelling using 360 material as a source, but still delivering a traditional viewer experience. This is pretty exciting. It's kind of uh, cool, huh? You well, know, it's like my daughter's wedding's coming up, and I think maybe I want to shoot it in VR. It's uh, Add one in, throw one in. <laughs> just, re just, just realize everything's on this, you know, everything's in the scene. <laughs> I know. Like, so you're drinking Uncle Tom in the corner right, right, when they show right, up? Right, right. I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. I see. Cool. This is just, it's exciting because we feel like we're at the very beginning of something. And there, there seems like, like you said, there's, there's weight to this. It doesn't seem like this, you know, 3D, which is, I don't know, I never really got into 3D. But this, I can see tremendous possibilities for training and uh, it, it's, it's pretty, pretty exciting storytelling. Yeah. It's really, really great. Um, Excellent. So hope you like that. And uh, you can get these tools now uh, fairly inexpensively and start playing with them. Uh, check out Ripple Training, all the links below. And uh, we'll see you next time on Mac Freak Studio.